So this year, I decided I was going to do a demo to show you how you can print your own art, something like this, using a pasta machine. To begin with, I'm going to just go over some of the materials that we use. The first thing is, and the important thing is for this process, we use something called a, a pasta machine, which is actually made for crafts. It's made for sculpey and running things um, through the rollers, but I use it to create a print. And the brand I use is called Amico, and I bought it at Michael's, and it was very inexpensive, and I even used a coupon. So anyway, that was the first part of it, and um, that's an important piece. The other part is that we use to make the plate, we use little containers from things like berries or cookies or um, things from sushi. And I cut off the lid and use the flattest section that I can. I, cut, I start it by cutting like with a scissor. I just cut Now remember the pasta machine can only take a small size through its rollers. Um, I use something that's 4 by 5 and I found that works well. Now I can see on this one it has little dots in it and you might like that effect so it would be fine. Um, I wouldn't probably use this one because it would create a pattern but to get rid of this label you can use a material called Rougon. So that's like the start of your plate the first part. So once you get your plate, and what I do after I squared it up somewhat, uh, I use a square by using my mat board. It has lines on it and you can use that to align your um, image and square up your piece very nicely. And then once you have it squared up, you can use it to draw the, the, the size out. And the way I have it here, you can see that I have I've created a square based on the drawing that I printed out. Let's talk about the drawing. This can be either a photograph. I, I took a photograph and then I made a, um, a drawing from it, printed out on the computer. The one thing to keep in mind is that you need to um, reverse it because like for instance, this one, it's reversed when you um, actually print it. So I keep the, the plate larger so that I can write on, on the bottom, on the, on the wrong side that I'm not going to scribe, my word bottom, um, I write it backwards, and then when I flip it, it says bottom, and I know that is the right side that I'm going to scribe. And that just makes it easier for me to remember in case I go away from the piece and I come back and I, um, you know, end up, you know, not scribing the correct side. So anyway, um, this is another plate that I printed, and it, as you can see, it is reversed. The plate had been larger, but I trimmed it down because afterwards, so I wouldn't have any ink to have to clean up on the edges after. It just makes it easier. Um, that's when we get to printing. The ink that I used on this is Caliga Wash Etching Inks. They're water-based, and I like using them at home because you can clean up. The cleanup is very easy. Some kind of um, plate to put the ink on. Um, you will need a spatula to get the ink looser, um, but we'll get to that in the printmaking part. Um, once you've gotten to this stage where you have hinged it and you have the word on the bottom, so you know that's the front side that you're going to scribe, you take either um, different thicknesses of markers and find the one that works best for you. And you also need to make sure that it writes on the um, plate because some markers don't write as well. This one works okay for a while and it seems to stop the fine ones. So I find that Sharpie always works, but it's kind of thick. You just have to keep it up high and then you are able to get a nice clean line. Um, if you have areas that are not going to be cut out and you want to make sure you don't scribe it, you can always use a, like a brush. Be aware that like when you use some of these markers as you're working it, you can smear it <laughs> and it comes off on your hand and it makes quite a mess. So the permanent markers are nice to use, but just keep your hands clean as you're working so that you don't get it all over your um, yourself. When you're scribing, you also need this um, rubber mat that you, they use for liner for kitchen um, drawers or anything because it doesn't move. So as you're scribing, it helps to keep the plate in place. 
Okay, now I'm going to demo how to trace. I have it set up the way I've described as a hinge. That way I can keep checking on my progress uh, and see if I don't miss any lines. It's more um, prevalent in a complex drawing, obviously. And then I just start tracing my drawing. And with my marker, and if I like the line, um, I just keep going. And there you have it. And you just continue until you have your as much information as you want for you to start incising. And next we will show how to do that. So now that I have traced my entire image, let's say I have, now I'm going to show you how to, um, what I call incise. Incising is just carving away the plastic. I'm using a diamond head scribe, but a, a dry point one is just as fine. And you can use an X-Acto knife, a number 11 blade, and that can work. And then you just keep, you have to apply a bit of pressure, but you can see it. And then you put in your hash marks, your dots, your dashes, any mark making that you want. And then you're ready to ink. Okay, so now I'm back to show you how to actually ink the plate. The first thing I'm gonna do is take gloves and put them on. One of the ways I find that's a good tip of how to put on gloves easily is to sprinkle your hands with some powder first and then they kind of go on easy and come off easy. First I'll put on my gloves because this part is messy. The other thing that I need for this thing, I use a little, that same rubbery stuff underneath my plate because it's gonna slide around and this way I can, when I get the ink on there, it doesn't go all over the place. You also need tarlatan, which is a starched cheesecloth, but cheesecloth by itself might work too. And then you need the ink and the ink that I'm using is this Cranford um, Caligo Safe Wash etching ink, which is a water base. I'm just using black for the demo, but it comes in different colors and you can mix and match and create your own colors. It's easy cleanup and I really like the quality of this ink. Plate to put the ink on. Um, you will need a spatula to get the ink looser. So I've put out a little bit of ink, and then the next thing you have to do is sort of work the ink. And I've, I've worked it already so that we wouldn't have to watch me do it, but at least a couple of minutes just um, with this little amount of ink to get it um, um, kind of loose. Um, but it's also a warm day here, so it kind of doesn't need as much working. So once you get it kind of in this state of nice kind of liquidy, lovely black ink. I take it as much as I can off of my spatula. And then I have these cut up little pieces of boards that are mat boards that I use that I'm going to apply the ink with. You can also use a credit card or sometimes people make, you take felt and you roll it and you can make a stamp and you can kind of put the ink on that way too. So that's another good thing. And the other thing that you'll need is some cotton swabs and this material called tarlatan, which is a starched, starched cheesecloth. So, um, but cheesecloth again, like I said, might work. So I'm now going to grab some ink and I'm going to take it on my plate and I'm going to start applying it pretty liberally as much as I can. Just get all the corners. And I'm going to go in different directions. I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to try this direction. I'm going to try diagonally a little bit. And once I get it covered, I'll put that down. I'm going to take another one. I'm going to try to clean off. Then I take my tarlatan and I kind of roll it into itself, making a nice kind of 
flat surfaced like that. And I pounce it a little bit to make it sort of a flat surface. And now I'll start trying to clean it off. With a circular light motion. The first, um, sometimes the first or second runs of these are not so great. So one of the things that I do is just do a test. I take a few sheets of this paper and I do the same thing, kind of roll it into a kind of a little ball. Get one surface. And you can light very lightly. Let's see, you can get some extra stuff off of that one. Okay, that looks pretty good. You don't want to have a gummed up and blocky, you may not like that. That's why you have to um, print it a few times to see what the plate looks like. Okay, so I think I'm ready. I'm going to now set up my little sandwich that I call it. So then the other thing I can do is I can take a Q-tip and I actually can clean up um, lightly areas I want to be a little lighter. Maybe like in a little bit. So once again, I will um, start with my cardboard, an extra cardboard, and I'm lining the top so that when I, I have a clean edge. And then I'll put down my newsprint again for the edge. I'll put down my plate. Now, my paper, I always mark it with the pencil to, because if you're going to experiment, you want to know um, what worked, and it's sometimes nice just to make sure you know what paper you used. So I always put on the back side um, what I used. And sometimes when the paper gets a little bit drier, this paper is so nice, but it, it, can, it, it dried while we were talking, um, I spritz it with a little um, just a quick water on the back and it will reabsorb. Oops, don't do what I just did. Okay, then you take it from the top and you lay it down. And then you use another piece of newsprint. And uh, I, this time I'm gonna use two pieces of newsprint because I think it might need it. I'm trying to make it a nice tight fit. Then I'll put my um, felt and then line up again my top. And now I'm ready to run it through the press. So I'll line it up and I kind of push it in a little bit. Take my again, start it. Still find some tight again with a number seven for my final for machine. And I just run it through as smoothly as I can. Always the fun part. So I'll take off these, take off my print, take off my newsprint. The back is dirty as you can see. Oh look at that. So there is the print. So again I could have cleaned up the head a little bit more, which is fine, but other than that, it's a nice rich dark print. And the more I print this plate, the better I get to know it and know where the problems or the areas are that I want lighter, and you can keep working it. So that's how you do it, and that's the demo for today.